The iMac is 26 years old. We first saw it in 1998. It's come on a long way since then, but at its core, it's still an iMac. It's the most Mac of all Macs, I've always thought. If you are somebody that's not into what we're into, somebody that's not into tech, to think of a Mac, it would be an iMac. The bezels, the chin, the aluminium casing, the stand, it's just such an iconic design. For many of us, the iMac was our first Mac, and we still hold them in such high regard. They've still got a huge place in our hearts. And with a Mac event around the corner in just a couple of weeks' time, I thought this might be a good chance to talk about why we love our iMacs and what's in store for the iMac in a couple of weeks' time as well. If this is the first of my videos you see, my name's David, and I make videos about Apple Gear every week. Why? Because I use Apple Gear all the time, and I love chatting about Apple Gear. If you watched last week's video, you'll know that I briefly mentioned Steve Jobs, and I alluded to the fact that I didn't think he'd necessarily be the same power now as he approaches 70 years old as he was back at the height of his powers, back in the late 90s and early 2000s. When Steve Jobs had this idea of the iMac, that was when he was at his peak. He recognized the brilliance of, the brilliance of Steve Jobs was that he recognized the moment and he grasped it really quickly. He was at the absolute forefront of this internet revolution that was about to happen. It was a once in a lifetime generational change and he made sure that Apple was right there at the cutting edge. His brief for the iMac was brilliant and simple. Aren't all the best ideas? He wanted something that was an all-in-one design, something that was easy to get out of the box that anybody could set up and within a few minutes could be online and could be on the internet. It was brilliant in its thought, brilliant in its design and brilliant in its concept and delivery. It nearly wasn't called the iMac, of course. If Steve had had his way, it would have been called the Mac Man. Luckily, he lost that one battle, but he won the war. And the iMac, of course, has been with us ever since. Apple has made it very clear where they want the iMac to sit in their lineup as of 2024. They could put any amount of power in it if they wanted to. But they've chosen not to. In my mind, we've got two pure consumer devices, although Apple Silicon has kind of blurred the line on what a consumer device is. We've got two consumer devices, the MacBook Air, and the iMacs. My very first Mac was actually the MacBook Air you can see behind me on the shelf there. Then my next Mac was this iMac, a 21 and a half inch iMac that I loved using. Still got it now. I've hardly got rid of any of my iMacs actually. The Mac I've got the most affinity to is an iMac. My 27 inch iMac, I absolutely love. I bought it in 2015, specced it up really well, and it served me so, so well. It was the first Mac I used on this channel. It's how I started to edit videos on this channel, on that Mac. And then I progressed past there onto Apple Silicon and the M1 Max MacBook Pro. But that particular iMac has got such a place in my heart. I grew a company on it. I started this channel on it. We went through COVID together. So that Mac goes nowhere. I think I probably had four or five in my time, but that particular iMac means the world to me. And so successful were those large iMacs. Of course, for a time, Apple decided to try and beef them up and give us more and more power. We got the iMac Pro. Now, I never used an iMac Pro. I worked alongside a company that had a couple and everybody that used them loved them. They said they were fantastic machines and they had bootloads of performance as well. You could spec them up with anything from 32 gigs of RAM all the way up to 256 gigs of RAM. I think you could spec them to four terabytes of storage. They were crazy machines. They even had USB-C ports all that time ago. But somehow, people just didn't fall in love with them. They were, for a time, a rival to the Mac Pro and almost a poor man's Mac Pro. Now, Apple is never going to get rid of the Mac Pro. We know that. If it's a vanity project, who knows? But I think they need to have that Mac Pro as a nod to their heritage. It will always be there. And for that reason, the iMac Pro disappeared. It was only with us for a short spell of time, I think five years, 2017 to 2022. And that was the last of the big iMacs. And of course, with the sweeping through of Apple Silicon, with the studio display, the Mac Studio, I just don't see that we're ever going to get a large iMac again. It just doesn't seem necessary in the current lineup. As much as people lament its passing, I just don't see we're going to get another large iMac. But even with all of the Macs that I've got around me at the moment, an M1 Max MacBook Pro, an M3 MacBook Air, and the M4 iPad Pro, I still use an iMac every day. That lowly spec M3 iMac that you see behind me, I still use it. And there's a very good chance, in fact, when you read the comments that I reply to, that either I reply to those comments either off of the M4 iPad Pro or off of that iMac. I just love sitting in front of an iMac. I still feel, as I said earlier on, it's the most Mac of all Macs. Now, when I bought that iMac a year ago, I, I bought it eyes open, but in the lowest possible spec. I bought it for reviewing on the channel. I wanted to let you know how good a basic M3 iMac was. Storage isn't an issue, 256 gigs of storage. I knew it wasn't gonna be a heavily used machine and anyway, external storage is cheap and easy to use. The eight gigs of RAM is an issue. 
Always has been, but I think things were about to change. I'll tell you why in just a moment. That iMac cost me £1,400. If you want to spec an iMac all the way up with 24 gigs of memory and two terabytes of storage, you can spend twice that, £2,800. Whether that's money well spent or not is a different argument and for a different video. But again, it's clear to see where Apple visions this iMac sitting in their lineup. If you look at the I.O., it's really limited. Even if you spend £2,800, you're only going to get two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports and two USB 3 ports. They simply don't want to put more power or more grunt into it. It is a consumer device, and that's what I said. It's still the same original concept of the iMac that it's always been. A simple to use, out of the box, all-in-one design that anybody can get online and use. Now, as you know, this channel isn't a rumors channel, but we all know that there's very likely going to be an event in just a couple of weeks' time, and it will be a Mac event. It's rumored to be on either Monday or Tuesday, the 28th or 29th of October. Yes, there could be an Apple TV. Yes, there could be a couple of new iPads, but it's basically going to be a Mac event. There'll be new M4 MacBook Pros. There will be a new iMac, although sadly, apparently there's going to be no changes to the iMac. The color is going to be the same. The I.O. is going to be the same. The size is going to be the same. All they're doing is putting an M4 chip in there and the basic M4 Apple Silicon chip of that. Again, Apple wants to keep this as a consumer level machine. They want to keep it as an all-in-one, simple, anyone can use machine. And that's fine. I think you need that line in the sand. But if we're not even getting new colors, we're getting new specs, there's nothing new about it other than M4 Apple Silicon, then this year, I'm not going to buy an iMac. One of the few Macs I've never owned, I think there are three, a Mac Studio, a Mac Pro, and a Mac Mini. The Mac Mini looks like it's going to be all new. Apparently, it's going to be redesigned. The first time it's been a new design since 2010. It's going to get more I.O., and it's going to be really, really powerful. There's going to be a base level M4 Mac Mini and also an M4 Mac Mini Pro, which is the one that really interests me. Size-wise, it's going to be about the size of an Apple TV, but just a little bit taller. It's going to have active cooling. So this is clearly going to be a pretty beefy little boy as well. And there's going to be good I.O. Five ports we're going to get on there, five USB-C ports, three on the back, two on the front, Thunderbolt, we're told as well, which is going to make the I.O. really, really impressive, better than on any MacBook Pro, which is what really tempts me to want to try this machine out. On the back, apart from the two or the three USB-C ports, we're going to be getting the HDMI port, of course, and also a headphone jack. The only thing we're not clear about at the moment is the Ethernet port. A, is it going to be on the back of the actual Mac Mini itself, or will it be on the, on the brick like it is with the IMAX? And also, will you be able to spec it up to a 10 gig Ethernet port as you have been able to in the past? Because that has been, again, one of the really unique and USPs for the Mac Mini. M4 Apple Silicon is going to have massive implications on the already mighty Mac Mini. If you're into gaming, it's going to get hardware-based ray tracing. And also, gone are those basic specs of 8 gigs of memory. Apparently, every single M4 Apple Silicon Mac that's sold is going to start at 16 gigs of RAM. And the Mac Mini, you'll be able to spec up to 32 gigs of RAM. If the history is anything to go by, then we should still be able to get up to 8 terabytes of storage on the Mac Mini. And with all of that I.O. as well, for me, it could be a game changer. I might no longer have to think about replacing my MacBook Pro with another M4 Max MacBook Pro, which is going to be ridiculously expensive. These Mac Minis are always so affordable. I've got a studio display sitting here. I've got all the other peripherals that I need. This could be a real bargain replacement for me. My M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is pretty much the Mac that this channel has been based off of over all of the years, is just starting to show the very first signs of aging. Maybe I can replace it with this Mac Mini. Maybe I can make this Mac Mini my actual daily driver. All of that extra power is going to make this machine absolutely fly. But let me know. What Macs are you most interested in getting your hands on? And what are you looking out for at this event that's rumored to be coming our way in just a couple of weeks time? I've been speaking a lot about iMacs in this video, but obviously iPhones are very close to all of our hearts. And I kind of think that the iPhone that we've got at the moment, the iPhone 16, is unfinished business. And this video will tell you why.